Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on mysterious and weird true stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Case file number 699, written by Arb1227. How could furniture vanish and then reappear? Recently, I was at my aunt's house alone to use her pool. I was in the kitchen, pulled out a glass cup from the cabinet, and a spider jumped out at me. I dropped the cup and glass flew everywhere. I was barefoot, so I ran upstairs to grab a pair of shoes to clean up. First, I went into her guest room. She used to keep most of her shoes in there. I opened up the door and the bed was gone. I could see the outlines of where the bed used to be indented in the carpet. I closed the door and remembered thinking where the hell did it go and why did she get rid of it? Did she sell it? Why didn't she tell anyone about it or ask my boyfriend for help moving it? I thought it was weird, but at the same time my aunt had talked about wanting to move in the past so I thought maybe she just sold it in very early preparation. I also thought maybe she was turning that room into something else. I had it in my head that I was going to text her and ask as soon as I got back outside where my phone was. It took way longer than expected, at least 30 minutes, to pick up all the glass. When I was done, I tried going back outside and her cat tried escaping out the back door, so I basically had to tackle him to get him back inside. After all that, I completely forgot about the bed being gone. It wasn't until a few weeks later when I was over at her house again. I asked her what she did with her guest bed. She had no idea what I was talking about and she said the bed was still there. I walked upstairs and yep, the bed was exactly where it used to be. No idea what happened that day. Mind you, I was completely sober too. Creepy file number 38, written by Possible Business, The Stalker of the Night. So when I was in college, I used to pull all-nighters and fuel myself with takeout and coffee during exam week like any other student. It was early January, so the area around my apartment, which mostly had outstation university students, was pretty deserted as most of the people hadn't yet returned from the winter break, but I unfortunately still had an exam left. It was around 2am that night, my friend and flatmate and I decided to order some food but our usual restaurant wasn't accepting orders online, so we decided to head out and grab some cup noodles and soda from a nearby 24-7 store. Anyway, as we walked by, most of the usual night stores were shut and even the 24-7 store was closed for some maintenance issues. I was disheartened, but still very hungry, so I opened my phone trying to see if anything else was open nearby. I was busy browsing my phone for any place that might be open, and my friend started messing around saying that she saw something move inside of one of the stores and maybe it was following us and I brushed her off as usual as I knew she had a habit of trying to spook me. However, as we started to head back home, my friend suddenly huddled close to me and told me to call someone. Me being the hungry and dense idiot that I am, I thought that she meant to call up a restaurant, so I told her in an annoyed tone that I was trying, damn it. We reached a T-point intersection on the main road when my friend suggested that we take the inner lane, which is a shortcut to our apartment, as the streetlights on the main road are out and it's pretty dark there. I agreed quickly as the inner lane is pretty well lit and we know our way around. As we walked into the lane, my friend, who had been acting strangely until now, started to tug me by my elbow and before I could question her, she looked at me in the eye with a somewhat scared smile and told me that we needed to run. She then started to run, like actually full on sprinting. Now usually, I ignore her antics when she tries these practical jokes on me, but for some reason that night, I too began to run because something in my gut told me to listen to her. However, after a bit, I was cold and out of breath and I yelled at her. Can you just freaking stop? Ugh, there's no one around, stop messing. She slowed her pace and turned around and by now I was more than annoyed at her for trying to spook me. Mind you, by this point, there were a few feet of gap between us, and as I caught my breath and turned to look up at her, I could see her expression had paled all of a sudden. She wasn't looking at me, she was looking behind me. It was at this point my sleep-deprived cranky brain realized that something was seriously wrong, and I heard a noise behind me. What I didn't know 
was that our stalker, who had been steadily following us, was only a couple feet behind me, and when I had yelled at her, he had heard me and started to run towards me. I still can't completely describe that moment. The sound of someone's weird laughter and footfall behind you, the sound of your own pounding heart, the way your ears go all hot and tingly, it was my body being aware of just a lot at once. So when I semi-turned back and saw a random ass full-grown man sprinting his way towards me, I didn't know how to react. I'd like to think that I could have unfrozen myself, but it wasn't until my friend forcefully gripped me by my arm and started pulling me that I began to run. I heard him yell, almost roar behind us, but I couldn't understand what he was trying to say and at this point I was busy running and too scared to turn around anyways. I think it was the adrenaline in my veins and my friend's grip on my arm that helped me not lose my crap and run the fastest I ever have in my entire life. We zigzagged our way through the lanes to lose him and we finally managed to get to our block. The last my friend turned to check, he'd begun to slow down in his pursuit when we crossed the barricade to our area. When we entered our apartment building, I crumpled down by the elevator floor, still trying to process the entire chase and to figure out why this man had decided to chase us to begin with. My friend then told me she'd seen him looking strangely at us when we were around the convenience store and he was near a truck unloading some boxes. She'd dismiss him, assuming he was part of the store maintenance crew, but something about him made her feel uneasy. Later on, when we were at the tea point, from where we enter the inner lanes, she said she saw him again with his truck following behind and felt that it could be a coincidence, but that she felt it was still better to take the inner lane where the truck couldn't go in. When she finally saw him for the third time by the corner of the lane silently walking his way towards us, she knew that he was following for real and we had to shake him off. She always used to jokingly quote to me, once is happenstance, twice is coincidence, but thrice is enemy action. I still think it couldn't be more true in this case. Even though a lot of my friends later told me we could have taken him on as he was only one person while we were two, at that time we didn't want to take any chances in case he had his friends waiting around. To this day, I'm thankful for the fact that I trusted my gut to run even though I was unaware of the exact nature of the danger behind me initially and also my friend that ran back to drag me by the arm even when she could have easily outrun him alone. It's been three years since then, and even now my brain automatically tries to scan who is around me and tries to mark out possible exits out of any room. Case Notes for Creepy File Number 38 The Stalker of the Night So I'm a guy, uh, obviously my experience is going to be very different. But even as a guy, I've walked alone on the streets at night and it can get kind of creepy. Sometimes you have the impression that someone is following you or at least watching you. The eyes staring behind you, boring into your skull. Sometimes there's just that feeling. Our subconscious picks up on so much more than it feeds directly into our conscious brain. It's this separation. The subconscious is doing so many processes that we're not aware of and they're so quick. Well, sort of like... All the paintings behind the scene, you only see the final one, and you don't know how quickly they're being painted. Which is why it's typically a good idea to trust your gut. It's not always accurate, but it's picking up on so many things that you wouldn't know. For instance, you say that your friend normally pranks you. Well, in this case, your subconscious probably was picking up on the fact that her tone of voice was different. It was more real, uh, so her pranks are more discernible, at least subconsciously. And also perhaps her mannerisms, her body movement, her facial mannerisms, her facial expressions. They would all be very different than in a prank, unless she's an expert actress. So your subconscious picks up on this and tells you, okay, trust her, there's something wrong. Your subconscious is essentially screaming, red alert, everyone to battle stations. I find this so fascinating. Our minds are perhaps the greatest mystery in the universe right now. They're so powerful and yet so misunderstood. Also, I wanted to mention that, for those saying that you should have stayed and fought, I don't agree. I think, uh, even if you have an advantage, technically, in numbers, well, you don't know who this person is, you don't know how strong they are, what their training is, and more importantly, even if you were very trained, even if you had five people on your side, you don't know what's going to happen. One wrong punch and you break your knuckles. One wrong punch received and you're knocked out and hit your head on the sidewalk and crack your skull open and you're dead, or have permanent brain damage. 
fighting is, it's not like in the movies and TV shows. It's not pretty, um, unless it's very specific, like boxing, but even then, one wrong punch and your brain turns to jelly. Um, so yeah, I just say, only fight unless you have no other choice. Otherwise, it's just needlessly risky when you could just escape.